same boat. It's an honor and a privilege to stand before you. For it's no snow, no ice, no bombs. No problem. And we fellowship one to the other this morning. Saints, I apologize. I have one more thing to say. There will be a meeting right after church for all Sunday school teachers. Please come downstairs. Listen, I need the help. The sisters are faithful. I love them. They get the work done. I need some men downstairs. Okay? No offense to the sisters because y'all hold it down, keep holding it down, and we need you. I need some men downstairs too, okay? We have little kids, middle-sized kids, teenagers, and a whole nine. Even if you want to just be a, a, a helper, you don't even got to be a teacher. Yeah. You want to be a helper, please come down immediately after service. We'll only be down there for about 15 minutes, yeah. okay? Just to get caught up, see where people are going to be. Please. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. And I appreciate you. Thank you for the teachers, and thank Amen. you for those that came on to listen. But this is the day that the Lord made. Amen. And I'm happy to say he blessed everybody this morning because we're here. He blessed us another day to get up, to be here. And I thank the Lord for each and every one of you that entered this door today. But he got something for you today. Those that came late, come early. Next Sunday, 830 Sunday school starts. You have to come. It's a part of the service. All the simple is coming around. Now we will get into the scripture this morning. It's coming from 1 John 2, only three verses, 24 to 27. Amen. And this is very important because it ties in with the Sunday school lesson. We're going to start at 24. I'm reading from the King James Version. And be patient. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning should remain in you, you should also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is it. Think about this verse. And this is his promise that he has promised us ever eternal life. These things have I written unto you, consider them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and yet not need that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things. And in truth, and is no lie, and even has it taught you, you shall abide in him. Amen. May those that listen and understand have a blessing to the understanding and reading of this word. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for the prayer, Lord. Thank you very much for letting me be a part of this celebration of this prayer. Thank you for my family being saved, and I pray for those that have storms in their life. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Church, say amen. 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 My Father in heaven, we come this morning thanking you, Father. Thank you. Father God, we come with thanksgiving in all our hearts, Father. Yes. Father thank you, God, for well, you've been a great God, Father. Yes. Father God, we come, Father, thanking you for rising up this morning, Father, yes. and starting yes. us on our way, Father. Oh, Father God, we come this morning looking to the hills on which you come to our help, Father. Yes. Father, we just thank you this morning, thank Father. You. Father, we come this morning asking you for the blessing of our, our pastor, Father, yes. and his beloved family, Father. Yes. Oh, Father God, we thank you for him, Father. Thank yes. you for the, the sacrifice they make, Father. Yes. For yes. the church and the service of you, Lord. Yes. Helping us, Father. Teaching yes. us, Father. Yes. Never stop, Father, in this yes. pandemic, Father. Yes. Never stop. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for this church. Thank yes. you for each of yes. family, Father. Father, we guide, thank you for guiding us, Father. Oh, Father, God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Yes. Continue to forgive us, Father. Yes. Father, we know you, you look 
Great God. Yeah. 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 We just thank you this morning. Lord yeah. yeah. God, and we pray for each and every one of this morning, Father. Yeah. We just pray and thank you, Father. We pray for those that are in the reading this morning, Father. We know some of all love on you, Father. We yeah. pray that you, that you will strengthen them, Father. Yeah. We pray that you will bring the peace of God unto them, Father. Yeah. Yeah. Let them know, Father, that you're still good, Father. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
participate in this by giving $100 to build up in our building fund. So please, 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 on your envelope that you, uh, when you give your tithes and offerings, please put your $100 in, in there for under others for the uh, Men's and Women Day. Amen? Amen? Thank you. And those that are out in Facebook, please send that uh, to the church, but please come out. Amen. Come out. The church Amen. is open back up. Please Amen. come out and fellowship and be a part of this great service, Amen. this great communal that God has put together. Amen? Amen. 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 Now you are now in the hands of our junior choir. Amen. 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 And the colors that we will be wearing on uh, Men's and Women's Day is black and blue. Black and blue. So please show up and show out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
whether or not we know God. Yeah. Yeah. Reverend White used to always say, uh, a person would rather see a sermon any day than a hear one. He said, he, he was talking to somebody and said, somebody said to him, said, you so, I'm so busy watching what you do. I can hear a word you say. You got to let this, you got to show this. If we have grasped the truth of God's word or the gospel, we're living it out in our lives. And that shows whether or not we know God. Well, well. <laughs> so a lot of people don't realize that. How you live. That's why some folks uh, call you a hypocrite. That's right. Because they say you're not living out what you say. Yes, sir. You have to be living. The, and are you going to be perfect? No. Amen. There are no perfection in the flesh. But we have to live the best we can. Yes, sir. That's why Dr. Sauber said, everybody said, I love everybody. He said, I'm trying. In other words, he was practicing it the best he could. Yes, sir. That works. So if we live it out, that means that we know God. But tragically now, the other is true of the reverse. If you don't know God, and don't have God within you, then you don't live like that. You don't live one way on Sunday morning in the church. And then all week long, you live in a different way. This is what this is what he's saying. You 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 got to live it every day of your life, no matter where you are. I, now I try my best. I slip. I slip. No. Yeah. All of us slip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I feel the best I can. Yes. That's why when I was president of, of the convention, I, I had my wife the first two years to uh, introduce me. And all of the people was watching her <laughs> while she was introducing me they was checking to see if she had to try to stumble and make up something <laughs> <laughs> or what she was saying they were looking to see if it was genuine and true <laughs> then I had the next year I had my oldest our oldest son to introduce me he had everybody in that crowd. The middle son did it the next year. He said, I'm not going to cry. I saw you crying, I ain't crying. When he got to introducing and talking about his father and, and the way he was, he started crying. Then sitting there, then the next year, he had them. Yes, yes. And our daughter did it the last year. Why did I do that? I did that. So I wanted people to know that I don't just act like this at the convention. I act like this in the home. So wherever I go, I'm living this. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not perfect, no, but I'm trying to live the best I can so that I can show that God is in me. John asked the question, are you living the gospel? Does the gospel live within you? Is your life a genuine life living the gospel? He said, this is the test. Does the gospel abide in you? Right. Now, I know he doesn't use the word 
uh, gospel in, in this particular verse. Matter of fact, the verse said, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. Yeah. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, then ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. Yeah. All right. Now, when you look at verse 7, he mentioned about, brethren, that right now, no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he heard from the beginning. The commandment is the word yes, which he heard from the beginning. So he's saying, he's talking about the word, the gospel. What we heard from the beginning is the gospel. That's what they had heard. He even told them to look back at verse 22, 23. You see, where uh, that anybody that denied Christ denied the gospel. False teachers were denying that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They were denying the gospel. So what you have heard from the beginning is the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. The good news. Not the gossip. That's it. Oh, our folks know the gossip. They know the latest gossip. There's some folks that you know what, you, and when folks see them coming, they'll say, uh oh. Here comes CNN. News Network. Because they know that you got the latest gossip, but is the gospel abiding in? The gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. It's the good news of the truth of the word of God. It's the good news about the message that the apostles preach. It's the good news about your salvation. That's how you know you're saved. You know, I hate it when folks question uh, their salvation because of what somebody said. You got to know this. John said, you, you've been told this from the beginning. You ought to know it. It ought to be living in you. The evidence of your salvation, the evidence of knowing God ought to be in you. And he said you need to continue in that. If you continue in that, then you continue in the Son and also in the Father. Yes, uh -huh. You see, you got to remain. Yeah. Remain means to abide, to dwell. It means that you carry uh, everywhere you go, that you carry the truth of God in your heart. You're not going to be uh, carried away by the false teaching of this world. When you know the truth of God, the, I don't care what false teaching comes up, you're not going to allow that to carry you away from the word of God. False teaching is around us. But you won't allow that false teaching to take you away from God. So how do you know if you know God? Does the gospel continue to live in you? In our lives? Are we continuing to live in the Son and in the Father? Is the gospel being lived out in our lives day by day? Are we confessing Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Or do we even know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Are we letting Jesus Christ live his life out in us? That will prove whether you know God or not. Are you allowing Jesus to live his life through us? He came and he lived the Father's life. In front of us. Right. Uh -huh. 
He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Look, 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 look at all of the passages that Jesus, when he, when, when he talks about you need to continue. Uh, the, the Bible says in John 15 and 9, as the Father has sent me so, I love you. Continue you in my love. See, this thing is about not about being in on Sunday. It's about a continuous walk with God every day. Look what Paul said to the Galatian church in and, and, and 2 and 20. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Now, I've been crucified with Christ, but I live. He said, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You, you ought to be living it because he gave himself for you. He died for you so you could live this life. Paul said, I live this life in the flesh by faith in the Son of God. Jesus said in John 3 and, and 6, Whosoever abideth in me, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither know him. Now let me clear that up. Because a whole lot of folks say, he, you, you ain't supposed to listen to it. What he was talking about was continuing in sin. When you recognize that something is sinful, you don't just keep doing it. That's why I told y'all I stumble sometimes. But my dad told me when I was a little young boy, he told me, he said, son, anybody can fall but don't have to walk. You might stumble and fall, but you don't have to wallow in it. When you recognize that it's sin, then you get up and get out of it. You don't continue in it. God knew you were going to sin when he saved you. But he also gave you an unction. Y'all remember from last week he gave you an unction? He gave you the Holy Spirit and every time you mess up. Now any true Christian, you, you can raise your hand on this. Any true Christian, lay right down this. Every time you sin, you get an unction that you are running. An unction comes and says, hold that. Don't do it. Don't do that no more. That's why he gave you that Holy Spirit. That's your unction. That lets you know when you're wrong. So you don't continue in sin. Thank you. Thank you. And and when you when you learn how to live in the gospel, he gave you a promise. All right. He promised you eternal life. Yes, sir. This is the greatest promise God ever made. Hallelujah. There are a whole lot of promises in the Bible. He might even promise you a million dollars, promise you a new house, promise you all the less stuff. But there ain't no promise as great as the promise of eternal life. Because let me tell you something the life you're going to live on the other side. Is much longer than the life you're going to live on this side. Eternity is forever. Eternal life is the supreme promise of God. But look at the thrust of this verse. See, in, in, in order for you to have that, he said, the gospel must remain in us. If we're going to receive eternal life. The gospel got to remain and you got to keep living. The gospel of the good news is to let you know how you ought to live. Yeah. And that will remain in you. Yes, sir. 
Well, what is eternal life, preacher? Well, it, it's life. I mean, it's real life. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's the very life of God Himself. It's what God breathed in the man's nostrils. That breath of life. See, now this is why I, I, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing a funeral, I, I normally let them know. Uh, yeah, they're always saying, get saved so you can live forever with the Lord. I said, well, you're going to live forever some way anyhow. Yes, right. all the life. Yes, <laughs> because when God breathed in the man, nostril, the breath of life, man became a living soul. Man's soul shall never die. That's eternal life. And God made a place for it so that it would not spend eternity in a miserable hell. Yeah. 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 But you're going to, that's why I say you're going to have eternal life. He promised you eternal life. Now the eternal, the other one is not eternal life. The soul is going to be living, but that's eternal damnation. Yes, sir. It's a difference. It's a difference in eternal life and eternal damnation. Eternal damnation means you're going to be in that, in that misery forever and ever and ever. And then I wish I could go on ever and ever, but I can't. I got to shut up off because it's going to be forever. <laughs> Long time, Reverend. <laughs> That's a long time. Matter of fact, man, you ain't gonna get out of time. You gonna even run out of time. <laughs> and the same thing in eternal life. Yeah. Basking in the love. That's it. Well, yeah, that's what eternal life is. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Once a person lives in Christ, he has eternal life. Matter of fact, the moment that you make the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, every day after that is eternal life. Don't you know God already reckoned every born again believer to be in heaven right now? He already reckoned me to be in heaven. It ain't no such thing yet. I, I might get there. No, no. God already got me there. Because of what the gospel is dwelling in me, the gospel is abiding in me, I'm letting it remain in me, and therefore God has already reckoned me yeah. 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 to be in heaven with him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Preach it all, God. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I, I heard somebody say, well, I'll be in heaven when I die, I'll be gone from here so quickly that I'll be in heaven before the devil even recognize I'm gone. <laughs> I'll be there at least a couple seconds before he recognizes I'm gone. <laughs> that, that's, that's it. Eternal life is given to those who accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and then live it out in your life. Why do you think Satan is constantly putting stuff before you to get you away from God? Anything that he can put out there to pull you away from God. It's stuff that way he makes all these false teachers out here trying to get you away from God. It's because he knows that you're going to have eternal life with God if you follow Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah. But if you follow him, he got a chance to steal your soul. Yeah. Yes, sir. Many times Jesus uh, spoke about eternal life. And, and especially in the book of John. He says it in, in John 3, 14 and 15. He said, and, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Satan knows this. He don't want this gospel like that. He don't want you to keep that in your heart. He don't, he don't want you to hide that in your heart. John 3, 36. He that believeth in the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. 
John 5 and 24. Very, very, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's it. It is John 6 and 4. And this is the will of him that sent me. Listen at this now. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And will I will raise him up in the last day. Ain't that so? I'll raise him up in the last day, eternal life. It should be dwelling in you. 11 and 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Huh? And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. That's why I told you, you you're not going to die. Not like that. Eleven and twenty-five, twelve and twenty-five. I'm sorry, twelve twenty-five says, "He that loveth his life shall lose it, but he that hated his life in this world, in this world, in this world, shall keep it unto eternal life." See, we've got hung up on this world. We've got hung up on this flesh. That's why you got to start living in the spirit of God. You got to start living in the word of God. You got to be living in the gospel of God. When you're living in that, you don't get hung up on this world. But why do we get hung up on this world? We're being seduced. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen what verse, look at verse 26 said. Verse 26 said, uh, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Yes, sir. See, the problem is we got somebody out here seducing us. <laughs> now, I can't put me in that too. I ain't exempt. Ain't nobody in the exempt. We got somebody out there seducing us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, why, why John writing this letter to believers? The main reason is because John knew that the false teachers was coming and trying to seduce the saints of God to get them away from Christ. That word seduce really means to deceive or to lead astray. A false teacher is one who attempts now to lead us away from Jesus Christ. From the truth that he is the son of God who come into the world to die for the sins of the world. Right. Why do you think you hear all of these false religions saying Jesus was a good man. He was a prophet. He was a preacher. He was a teacher. But he was not the son of God. Why do you think they're trying to seduce you not to believe that? And may I throw it out? May I? Listen. The old false teachers are using faces that's familiar to you who done got famous. I'm going to call some of them you got to stop being seduced by and follow this false teaching. You got to be careful so that you don't follow false teaching and false doctrine. When Oprah get up there and say that could be another way to get to God other than going through Jesus Christ, that's false teaching. When Beyonce and Jay Z say that this Illuminati that you don't know, you don't have to go through nobody else to get where you are. You can do it on your own. That's false. Come on, y'all, you can with me again. The devil is using. Hey, false teacher using the people and get them seduced and get them in it and then they want them to pull you in it. No, I ain't famous. They don't 
confuse me by commercials? To seduce you? I told you when they were selling them Nikes. You know why they, they use them brothers? Them big old brothers coming up those steps. And shoes ain't tied up. Yeah. Laid in a man. I'm talking about what God did. 
came for us. Lay his son in a manger. Didn't have no room for him in the end. Confused the doctors of the law with the law because he broke the law. He'll set raise the dead. Yet sight to the blind. And when he finished his sorrow, went to the main course. On a hill called Calvary. Let him nail his hand. Nail his feet. And died for us. And then God going to send somebody else. To lead us to him. Who don't even know the way. That's all right, now. Good teaching. Is the gospel mm, yeah. abiding in you? Yes, sir. Oh, Are you living this thing out? Mm. Oh, you got the spirit to help you. Yes, sir. He gave you an unction. Yes, sir. He gave you the unction. The unction is the Holy Spirit. Yes, and, and, and God himself gave you the unction. Yes, Jesus said, I'm going away. Yes, sir. And if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. He said, but if I go away, the Father's going to send you another Who's going to be with you forever? Thank you. That's the one. The one that died. He's the only one that you can get you to God. The one that died on okay? Yes, The one they put in the tomb. He stayed there. Yes, he did. The appointed time that God had given him. Yeah. But on that third day morning, yeah. he got up out of that grave with all the power of heaven and earth and peace. And nobody else got no power to lead you to God. He's the only one that can lead you to God. Thank you. What a word, God. What a word. Test you. Is that word abiding in you? Yeah. Is that gospel? Yeah. That miraculous word? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That sinless life? Right. That vicarious death? Yeah. That burial in the tomb? Yeah. That body resurrection? Yeah. That heavenly ascension that he now sits at the right hand of the Father. Ain't nobody else can go up there and sit down and intercede for you. Thank you. He took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is that abiding in you? That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Full and true. That's what the gospel is. The good news about Jesus Christ. It's the good news. That abide in you. I don't care what none of these celebrities say. You can't tell me that I don't have him and that he's not the, way, the true and the living God. Jesus is the way. And there is no other way. Is that gospel living in you? Is that gospel in you? Is it abiding in you? Are you letting it remain in you? Thank you. That's the test. That's part of the test. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Whether you know God or not. And anybody that said Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, yeah. know not God. Nope. That's right. That's right. In fact, John 
Bible says you're a liar. And the truth ain't in you. And God and our Father, we thank you. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Lead us to you. To get to know you while we're even here. And then he is the way that's going to lead us to you. He's the truth about you. And he's the life in you. Bless us to live it. Each day of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How you doing on the test? Five out of six. Five out of six. I have to get some retests. Like you got to pass these tests. You got to pass them. Because I don't want nobody to miss an eternal life. That's right. We don't want to miss eternal life. Let me tell you, that's the only way you're going to get there. You got to know Jesus, got to let him dwell in you and remain in you. That's the only way. Amen. Amen. Now somebody might not know him. I don't know. I, I, if you have trouble, if you even if you if this if these messages are shaking you and letting you know, maybe I, I gotta do something a little different. Then this is the time to do it. Listen. The time to get right is why you can, you know, the old folks are saying like this, while the blood is still running warm in your veins. See, you can't wait until you're laying cold in a, in a tomb somewhere and try to get right. This is the time. If you've got a problem, this is the time to get that problem straightened out. If you've got alienation between you and God, this is the time to set that up and get in God. Right now. This is it. Right now. You're going to need Christ. You need him in you. You need him dwelling in you. And this is the time for that. This is the time. If you're here in the sanctuary, this is the time for you to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If you're listening to us on Facebook Live and you're not there, this is your time. To get right with Jesus Christ. This is the time. You can't wait. You know, devil the one to tell you to wait where you got time. Well, I, I'm going to come when I get right. You can't get right. You can't get yourself right. Only somebody can help you get right is the Holy Ghost. That's why God sent him. He can help us get right. You can't do it on your own. None of us have done it on our own. All of us have done it with the power of the Holy Ghost. But you can get right. If you allow the Holy Ghost to come in. He's the way, the truth, and the life. If you're listening out there, listen. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, where you are right now, you can, you can start today allowing Christ to be savior of your life. And then hopefully one day you will allow him to become the Lord of your life. Let's, let's pray this prayer if you don't know it. Father, I've been living my life on my own all of these years. I recognize now that I was wrong. I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I'm committing my life to your son, Jesus Christ. I'm inviting him to come into my life, to abide in me. And allow me to abide in him so I can walk in you. So I can be with you one day. I confess my sins and I repent. And I come to you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You pray that prayer. That's what that's what salvation is.
you have to live it now. You just let it abide in you and just leave it in you and let it stay. And then God will help you to get life. Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you. 
also, Dr. Scott will be celebrating 40 years as a full-time evangelist in June. Amen? And I want you all to be a blessing to him. So think about whatever you want to bring. Uh, be a blessing to Dr. Scott. You can start giving it to Linda and she'll start putting it, putting it away. And then in June when we go out, we'll take it to him from St. Luke. Amen? Amen. 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 Forty years going around, not, not having no church, but going around from place to place, preaching and teaching in us. Amen. It's time now for us to pay our tithes. Amen. Okay, somebody told me they didn't want to Okay. All right, so we're ready for the food now. Amen. Somebody mentioned that they weren't going to do it, but we're glad that we're going into the pool.
we now we, we moved the, the men and women day to the fourth Sunday. Okay? We moved men and women day to the fourth Sunday. And give y'all extra week to get your hundred dollars. You got to be speaking if you need <laughs> But we want we want to be a blessing. And I was asking if each one to put them to our building fund. Yeah. Uh, if you would be a blessing to the building fund um, every week if you can. We still have plans yes, for our initiative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we do. We still have plans for our audition. And uh, we, but we, we want to, while we, while we are not able to do it, let's start preparing for it. That's right. Amen. Amen. If everybody would put five, ten dollars, twenty dollars, we put some in there. It would be a blessing to our building. Can you do that for us? We would really appreciate it. Amen. So much. So let's pay our tithe, give our offering, follow the direction of the earth. I thank you all. Those of you that's been paying your tithes and giving all, I want to thank God for each one of you. It's a blessing. It's a and how many of you been really blessed because you've been doing it? Can I give a shout out? Shouting in your own living yeah. Because God has blessed and he's, his word is true. Yes, it is. Amen. He's going to do what he said he will do. All we have to do is follow the direction of the Lord. And God will do the rest. Amen. Trust God. Believe in God. Amen. Trust him and believe in him and he will give you the blessings that he's saying on me. Good to see you, Louis. Amen. Amen. For my name's sake. Amen. Amen.
desire for that. Uh, 
my little grandson. And then the other one is going in tomorrow to have surgery. I will, we're praying for them that you touch each one, Father, and just we're praying for all of those that we don't even know their name. We ask your blessing be upon each one of us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And so the given day, man, we pray for her inside. Had that uh, our little grandson, uh, send his son, had his, he got, he had, 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 he had